All right, here's the um, ASU School of Earth and Space Exploration. It says, at the School of Earth and Space Exploration, we've brought together all of Earth and space science into one school. <clears throat> That's absolutely fabulous, finally. Breaking the traditional disciplinary boundary so that we can ask the biggest questions that we have in science, and then we're going to answer them. We're combining the strengths of science, engineering, education to set the stage for a new era of exploration. Thank God. All right, let's listen to what they have to say. All of space and earth science into one school, We've broken down the traditional boundaries so that we can ask questions that individual disciplines can't ask on their own. All of the students in the School of Earth and Space Exploration have chances to look at many different topics of research and to interact with many faculty. And we also want you to bring your ideas. We want to make it possible for you to pursue the things that you want to pursue. We're deeply committed to education. Loving every second of this. Here at CC, you can learn about astrobiology and understand the relationship between life and a planet. We're looking at the future in terms of climate and water supplies. We have one of the largest meteorite collections in the world, perhaps the largest one in any university. We have some of the best facilities in the world for building flight instruments that go to other planets and that create new understanding of life on Earth. We're capturing new images of the surface of the moon all the time, helping us to understand the history of meteoroid bombardment on the moon, how its crust was formed, and discovering details that have never been discovered before. We are at the very center of the community, trying to understand whether Mars is habitable, maybe even in the present day. Here at CC, we've broken the traditional disciplinary boundaries so that we can ask the biggest questions that we have in science. We're combining the strengths of science, engineering, and education to set the stage for a new era of exploration of the Earth, of the universe, and of the future. I am just loving this. Okay, that sounded absolutely fabulous. Now, here's what we need to do, first of all, then, is to understand what we're looking at here in the Sahara Desert. That is a gigantic fish. And that gigantic fish was being attacked, and the gigantic dragon spit out stuff on its back to try to kill it. And this is the gigantic dragon. And that gigantic dragon's throat runs all the way down here and this is the gigantic dragon scales in the gigantic dragon throat and it runs down and 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 at one point down here it appears that something slashed its throat way 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 down here boom right there and it bled out here in the desert from its dragon scaled throat and that dragon runs all, all the way over to the Mediterranean almost. There's the other side of his tail. And it's bleeding off transition metals. Now, this I also understand is transition metals because transition metals are the things that make life function. No transition metals, no life. That's how everything is carried around through your body. And I can prove every statement I'm saying. So this I expect should be taken into account. Now I also know what's on Mars because what's on Mars is exactly what's on Earth. And I guess I have to show you that too. Okay, I'm sure they know what these are. These are the Mars blueberries. Now let me show you what the Moki marbles are. And this is the basement layer of skin. These were what they call interstitial balls. And then there was collagen fibers and fluid filled stuff that has eroded away. And it did the same thing on Earth, and that stuff usually forms mud. On Mars, it would form a fine dust. <clears throat> now, that is the Mars crab, and that is an artery, and above it is a vein. This is muscle tissue. These are the sarcomere cuts in the muscle tissue. That's an artery, 
that's a vein. These are the blood vessels servicing the tissue. This is the red runoff of uh, blood cells. Oh, I remember I showed you those are the Mars blueberries. These are the balls. The balls are the real hard ones and they lock in the tissue so that it can move, you can stretch this way and that way and this way because these are fluid filled bags and they do this sort of thing. These collagen fibers bring them back into their shape. The balls anchor the collagen fibers. It's a little bit of a system. Now let's see what it looks like in other areas. All right, these are, I believe they call these Moki marbles, and these are those same little interstitial balls, and the gooey part has eroded away here, and in, on Earth, it, it forms mud. It doesn't just dust away, uh, and, but you lose the straps. The straps all turn into mud. The balls are tough as hell, and um, they call them concretions. They're not concretions. They are interstitial balls. Okay, this is the Mars Morris code. I showed you that intersection. That is the, those are those webby little things, and these are the balls. This is gathered skin, and this is stretched skin. All right, see it? Now, if it all relaxed, it would all come back to being something like this. Now, it's eroded away and left these little, it's really almost like sandblasted on Mars. You see that? On Earth, it's totally different. Let me show you what happens on Earth. Earth is a, a water planet. And I think, well, anyway, I'll talk about that later. Okay, I just want to <clears throat> brag a little bit, because I have a, a presence in every part of science. And uh, I understand the transition metals and why they form these colors and how they bond together. And I have a new theory called electron flood theory, which says there is nothing but electrons. However, there are dipoles, which consist of the strong and the weak force, which they call the boson, the fermion. And we have actually disassociated the fermion from the boson and shown that. And I believe that's why they have just admitted that the Bohr model doesn't work. All right, I, I, I just want to establish why I deserve a seat at the table. This is red pulse laser. This is that same red pulse laser accelerating, shown as a particle. We actually find it as a box of electrons, and we can actually disassociate, disassociate the electrons, and then disassociate the weak part of the electron from the strong part, because electrons are dipoles. And as I said, I think probably already, but I will again, electron flood says there is nothing but electrons. There is uh, um, 1837, I believe, of electrons per proton, 1838 per neutron. And it ends up being a helium, helium atom, ends up, I calculated this out sometime in the past, 7350 electrons. And there's two electrons in their outer orbit. The powerful part of the electron, the strong force, opposes each other, so they sort of, you know, form a shell around the outside. The weak force just couples up together, and there's no, no issues. They can go right together and they have no problem. So it ends up being a shell of negatives forcing everybody else to sort of surround each other, and then these negatives want to get into the positive, but it says, no, you two can stay right out there, and that, that takes care of my magnetism outwards, and you fulfill my push and your pull makes me balance out. That's what's called stability. All right, so you got a strong force and you got a weak force, an electron. All right, a bunch of electrons together makes a photon. I believe it's four. When they ex concuss, they explode. Now, let me show you what happens when they do explode. Don't forget, that's what they are as they are traveling through the air. You know, I, I, I really like this University of Arizona. I'm so glad that they're bringing everything together in all the different disciplinary areas. Because I discovered mud fossils. That's a, a human lung, and it's been DNA tested human. And uh, <clears throat> it's no question about it. It's also been CAT scanned and anatomist verified. 
And I also have giant human beings, and that has also been CAT scanned, DNA tested, and anatomist verified, chemistry, microscopy, everything. So I'm so thrilled that they're talking about all of these disciplines. And I can pre present all of this to them. And I would assume that, you know, because I had all three of these things done, and I had one, a bigger fingertip than that done. So I have copious amounts of information. Let me show you something else. We have a batch of different new species. This is, I call these the no-toes. I discovered this one about well, eight or nine years ago. And that, that's where the fibia sits there. The tibia goes, the big bone, sits in that saddle. And um, Tish Egerton has them in all kinds of different st states of, of um, decomposition. Okay, remember what he said about interdisciplinary. I work with light, and this is accelerated light, and these are <clears throat> the light particles as they begin to slow down. Now, they come in different colors. We also have them in red, and then I will show you that we have discovered the boson that they have been looking for. All right, now, as you can see, that's the red pulse laser, and I, I told you, these are the particles. You don't really see them until we force them into being seen, and, but this is that light particle this is the particle and it's being forced to accelerate and sucked out of its magnetic bubble and accelerating through the venturi these are the higgs fields and this is a red one of these the other one was green now let me show you how we can make these things charge separate and that's exactly what they've been looking for is the boson and here it is when they concuss here's here's the electron float theory all right, electrons are a positive and a negative. I'm representing the red as the, po the negative and the black as the positive. The red ones surround the negative, the positives, because the positives don't mind being together. The red, the, the negatives, they don't want to be together. So they sort of surround the, the positives until, until they make patterns, and that represents what the initial end up quantum states are going to be of these particles attached in certain ways to certain pockets which will be around here and it's shown easily it, look up salt experiments salt vibration um, experiments and don't forget this was just a big ball of magnetism with a particle in the center way back here and then as the venturi forced it to accelerate the particle got pulled right out of the the light magnet ball. It's a <clears throat> magnetic ball with a particle in the center controlling a region. And then it explodes here and now we're going to see the boson. You remember the photon was like this and because it has a positive and a negative side it forces it to to spin and that's what creates the right hand rule. Now the negative, part, uh, the negative portion is the white and it explodes like a bomb. That's what we've always considered was the electron because it pushes and shoves and it forms electricity and heat. Now, the black part, though, we never know about. That's the boson, the weak force. So you got a weak and you got a, a weak and you got a, a, a strong. And when they go through that venturi, they, the weak force gets exploded away and really just sort of drifts around until it catches back up, it looks like. I mean, that's all I can say. And this is the Venturi, which is like this, forcing like airplane wings to force this in. And at that point, everybody's magnetic bubble, which wants to be away from everybody else, is forced into such amount of chaos that you end up with this, 100% plus white. That, to me, is an energy increase. There's a lot to be considered here. Now, on the other side, <clears throat> they would consider these the interference patterns. They're not interference. They are repulsion patterns. All of these particles keep their line up, and they say, get away from me, get away, get away, away. And they say, yeah, you too, get away from me. And the black ones just sort of drift around. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, but that's exactly what they say they've been looking for. And I've been pushing this for years. Rod and I, Rod Warren, developed this... Venturi, and when he was just posting pictures, just you know, because he's just a hobbyist sort of guy. And um, when I saw it, I said, Whoa, brother, you got something here extraordinary. And he worked with me for oh, a year or more, two years probably. And um, the, the shots he got are we have antimatter, we have everything, man. 
And these are the smallest particles that exist. These are not like CERN. CERN is using the gigantic atomic bomb particles. We're using light. Light is the smallest particle there is. So we're, you know, really all it is is everything's made out of light. Basically, that's all it boils down to. And the light coming from the sun to the earth and everywhere else in space is these particles, which is matter, which is dark in space. And I would call it dark energy and dark matter because it, it turns into energy as soon as it concusses. So I feel I, like I have earned a seat at the table. And so far, I've been pretty well excluded. Now, uh, I've heard the statements and... Uh, I, uh, University of Arizona is uh, stepping up, it looks like, so let's see. All right, I love you all. Thank you. Okay, now, just so you understand, I understand physics intimately. I understand chemistry intimately. I have done all of the light experiments. We've accelerated light and she, seen the boson. I think I've shown that. I have studied ancient mythology. This is the encyclopedia, Nula Rose Encyclopedia of Mythology, and this puppy got some mythology going on and now I am looking at it in a brand new light because of the things the dragons and so forth so we have a brand new world with 2020 vision <laughs> we got a new atom all right which is the um, electron flood theory nothing but electrons we have a new ancestry hundred percent uh, when you got dragons and fish and all that business going on the history obviously is not what we were told these creatures are, and I, I, there's other creatures that we have. We have Notos, we have Nagas, we have all that stuff. All this has been su suppressed. So thank God for Arizona State or Arizona University. I'm not sure what, I believe that's the name, Arizona University. Now, we need to use old knowledge. Start over again, start new thinking. You got new, think new thinking. Because really, literally now, you got to think about eternity. Because they said we were just nothing but a big bang, and I'm not going with that anymore. And um, it's nothing but slime turned into monkeys, and we're monkey-type creatures. I'm not going with that anymore. I have giants. I have all this stuff, and it's, and it's been suppressed. So, Arizona, thank you. Here's Roger, R-O-G-E-R, -E at Mud Fossils with an S dot com. Please contact me. I have the information you guys can use and I, you probably have a lot of information I can use. I want to collaborate. I'm not looking for anything whatsoever other than to engage with this new information that you profess to look for. And, and I got it, my friends. All right. Thank you. I love you all.